Hi, everybody. It's Christina Quick. Welcome to the Monday Magic and Marketing Podcast, where we're going to talk about how to level up your business, how to make more money, and how to more fully move into your spiritual divine life purpose. So if you will bear with me just a moment, I'm going to make sure that I get our live stream posted to where it needs to go. Um, I will be reading comments as we go through the live. So please be sure that if you have comments while we're going around here doing the, the podcast that you get those in. And I will also um, come back on when the live is over and answer any questions that I may have missed. So thank you so much for joining me. It's a pleasure to see you guys. I don't think I've been live in almost probably a year. Um, so that's really exciting to be back with you guys and to be back in here in my happy place, which is my business. And so what have I been doing? What have I been up to? Well, <laughs> okay, let me get to where I can see comments. Hold on just a second. Uh, if you can comment on the actual business page, that would help me. So I'm not having to go to like three different places to see comments. So if you are seeing this in one of my groups, by the way, we have two groups, we have psychic hotline school, and we have the profitable psychic business academy lounge. So if you are watching those within the groups, do me a favor, click on my name where it says Christina quick, the profitable psychic click over here and join us on the actual page. We've had to do things just a little bit differently this year. Hi, Monique. Good to see you. Hi, babe. Um, just because there's been some changes in in um, Facebook land, which is, you know, par for the course. There's always, whenever I come back, there's always like new changes. And that's, you know, one of the things that I talk about in business a lot is that being able to have an entrepreneurial spirit means being able to kind of roll with that and have that flexibility. And that's a, that's a muscle. That's something that we actually train. So um, let's see. So season one. So let's just recap kind of where we've been. So my name is Christina Quick. I'm also known as the Tarot Biz Mentor. Hi, good to see you. I'm also known as the Tarot Biz Mentor online. I have a YouTube channel where you probably, that's probably where you found me. That's the majority of the case. That's where most people find me. So um, you're probably coming from over there. I've been on YouTube for almost a decade now. So chances are you've probably seen me over there. Um, and so what do I do? I started out in 2011. I got laid off from my job and I was a salon manager. So I managed several salons in the Kansas City area. And I got laid off on, on Thanksgiving. The salon went under and things happened. And I decided that I wanted to try to learn how to work from home and make really good money. And I really wanted to do it in a way that was going to make my spirit feel good. I was really tired of working in the kind of like the corporate space where I really felt like individuality and you know work-life balance was just not there for me. Um, I also am a chronic illness warrior. So I deal with chronic illness, genetic incurable chronic illness. So I'm a spoonie. Um, and so um, that is also related to why I decided to start building my business online at home. The first thing I did was I got on the psychic hotlines. So psychic hotlines are near and dear to my heart. I've been on, I just got, um, I just quit the psychic hotlines officially this year. I think it was in March. I think is when I had quit officially, I got let go from one company uh, for various reasons. Like we can speculate, but um, many reasons I think that kind of went into that. But what I do is I have psychic hotline school and that psychic hotline school is like my baby in my heart. Right. That's the one that um, I help people learn how to work on the psychic hotlines. And I am so proud to say that as of today, I looked in there, we have almost 8000 people enrolled in the psychic hotline school between the group and, and the course and the program. So that's amazing. 8000 baby psychics that we helped um, over the last decade learn how to make money online. And a lot of those people are women. A lot of those people are LGBT, people of color. A lot of those people are single parents or even disabled. So um, it really, that's me living. Yeah, that's me living my purpose. Congrats on AK. Thank you. Yes. And it's not just me. It's everybody. We all did this. I mean, if you have been in psychic hotline school at all, you know that it's a very powerful place to be because it's the first place psychics really learn that, oh, I can make money and I can make good money, right? Oh, you know what? Let me turn my little banner on so you actually know what I am talking about today. So there we go. <laughs> this is my little cute little banner there. Um, 
So we have that. And then I uh, shifted from the psychic hotlines and started going into um, uh, getting off the psychic hotlines, right? And starting my own business, doing tarot readings. And at, at that point, it was mainly tarot readings and fortune telling. And then around 2012, to the end of 2012, early 2013, I was like, you know what? I went through the same thing that everybody goes through. It's like, I don't think I can do this anymore. Um, so the psychic hotlines are great. And, but once you start making that money, you become more financially stable. It's like, ah, this is really kind of like low vibe. Right. Um, and so I, then I started on the journey of starting my own business and that kind of shifted and changed and morphed into starting to get into more like spiritual life coaching. And so for a while, I probably four years, I stayed in spiritual life coaching and with a specific like um, niche and demographic around helping people uncover their divine life purposes and awakening their spiritual gifts, right. And their intuitive gifts. And then eventually that morphed and shifted into becoming a psychic business coach. And so that's where I have been for like the last probably six, five, six years, maybe more at this point. Um, I started out just teaching people how to create an online business, you know, the basics, the logistics of it, learning taxes. I was actually a certified licensed tax professional there for a while. Um, so went to school for that, got my certifications in that. That was like a hundred hours of in-person. And then I did like another, I think about another hundred hours of um, on the job training. So I got to learn a lot of cool things. And that was really kind of like a catalyst that got me into learning more about like higher end business structure and, you know, how to actually set up a business where you can step away from it. And I know a lot of you are like, where I, I get messages all the time. Like, where have you been, Christina? Right. Like, I would say probably for the last like eight years, I was definitely in hustle mode. You know, we did. I have a huge vault of content, the profitablepsychic.com. So that's our academy website. Um, so that's where you can go and take all the trainings that I've released over the years. And I always make sure they're evergreen, meaning that if, whether I created them five years ago or one year ago, it doesn't matter. It's all still relative and good information. Um, that's the way business programs should be. That's just kind of like my little <clears throat> soapbox when it comes to that, right? But I'm also one of those rare coaches that. I'm not just a coach, I'm a mentor. And that's a really big distinction, right? As we move forward, understanding that a mentor is actually going to show you how to do things rather than a coach is kind of just kind of guide you and ask you questions about how you kind of feel and what you should do. Um, a mentor is really going to be like, okay, this is what you should do to get the best results, right? And so that's kind of like how I am as, as a coach. I'm really more of a mentor and that's my happy place. Um, my happy place right now has been developing some level of work-life balance. Um, for a while there, you know, I was continually reducing my schedule, reducing my workload, reducing the amount of content. And instead of creating just little bits of content, creating really big pieces of content. Um, and that's where kind of the magic and marketing podcast was born. And on Mondays, that's always the best way to do it. So it's called Monday Magic and Marketing. So season one, we really focused on like the logistics of setting up a business, right? Like how should you price yourself? What kind of considerations go into when you do landing pages? Um, how can you use the power of storytelling to connect empathetically with your audience in order to get them in a, to see your light and to be able to see how amazing you are and how much that you can really change their life by working with you to hire you as an ally to their business to their life purpose, right? Because I think that's what a lot of us all really go back to. Um, we're going to talk about different different things when it comes to niching and demographics today. That's going to be today's core lesson is about how to niche and what is niching? What What is niching versus what is a demographic, right? Um, what are those two different things? And how do you shift from one niche into shifting into another niche? And these are all really valid questions. And these are all things that I have been through many, many times. Um, so as I was telling you the story of all the different ways I kind of shifted in my own personal business, um, that's been something that I've had to deal with. Okay, how do I niche? How do I grow out of an old niche that I'm not interested in anymore? 
and then go into a new niche. And then, you know, there's all that money mindset and deservingness around that, that work that we have to do constantly. It's kind of, I know a lot of people wish that they could just do the money mindset journaling like once and then it's done and then you're completely cured and you never, you know, have money mindset issues or blind spots in your business about where really what it comes down to is where you're working too much and too, too hard, right? Where you're extending yourself too much and not getting enough in return. Um, and as you go to these new levels in your business, right? So maybe like for you, your thing is you really just want to make 50 K a year. You're like, I don't care how I do it. Um, I don't care what kind of readings I have to do. I will do it on the psychic hotlines. I just want to make $50,000 a year because at that point you're, you're working on establishing your, your, yourself, you're working on paying off your debt. You're working on getting ahead of your bills. You're working on getting food on the table, you know? So in the beginning, your niche really is whoever's going to pay you. Um, and then shifting out of that mindset, once you realize, once you start getting a regular set of clientele, which I will tell you very briefly what that entails, like you need to show up at consistent times. You need to be laser focused on who you help and how it helps them. And you need to know exactly how to talk to people, right? You need to be a good communicator and everybody's awkward at it. Every person is awkward at communication. Um, but that's something that you kind of have to learn, right? So uh, anyways, so when you are shifting into an actual niche that you actually want to be in, it's usually because there's some level of burnout happening, right? So some level of burnout going on where you're giving too much. And even though the money might be good, like you might be pulling in $500 a day working just a couple hours, but it does something to your soul when you are constantly working with people who don't have a level of self-awareness, who are constantly looking for things like predictions, who aren't people who aren't willing to do the deep transformational work in order to heal their own aura and to step into their own power and become powerful manifestors in their own life. Right. I mean, that's why we all got into this. Right. Because we really wanted to help people and we wanted to do it in such a way that we help them learn how to do the spell work, the manifestation work, how to do the shadow work by themselves with us as sort of like a guide, like a, a friend, someone who can kind of guide them through it, but not necessarily um, do it for them. So I just want to give a shout out to those who are uh, listening right now. Hi, Kiana. Hi, Richard. Svetlana. Good to see you. Casey's here. Um, don't be afraid to ask questions and comment as we are, you know, live here. I will stop every now and again and just kind of answer questions. If you have questions about anything I say, I would love for you to just put it into the box and then we can kind of talk about it because I think that's an important part of getting the information you need is that being able to have conversations with me, I think is such an important part of uh, what we do here uh, and why everybody that I work with is so successful, right? Because we really have an open dialogue. So don't be afraid to ask questions. There are no dumb questions um, and we will talk about it. So when you're niching, you start to get to this place where you're like, okay, I don't have to worry about just making the money anymore. Right. Hey, good to see you. Oh yes. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. You love these Richard. Thank you so much. He says season one was very transformational for me. It was transformational for me too. And, um, it's, it's, it's a really great season. I really hope that we can do as good of a job this season. Um, but we're going to talk more about the energy, right? So that's exciting. And I think that's what everybody's like waiting to, you know, like business stuff is kind of boring, <laughs> logistics, building funnels, you know, that kind of stuff, kind of boring, but the energy stuff, that's really where the magic happens. So when you get to this point where you're like, okay, I, I can't keep showing up every day and talking to these people. I can't answer that question again about whether so-and-so likes this person or what's the potential of a relationship or, you know, what is this so-and-so thinking about me? And they're all very like busy questions, you know, <laughs> they're like busy questions as in they take a lot of, um, 
quieting of your own mind, be able to like really fish for that really spiritual, ultra spiritual, like wisdom that we want to bring to people. You know, <clears throat> I recently got back on the line after a two year break and haven't gotten one call in three days. So if that's your, if that's your situation, then you want to pretty much leave your line plugged in like online, like a full day. Right. And then you want to drop your, your price down to like rock bottom prices. And that should help um, get things going again. And then once you get things going again, then you can raise your prices, and, um, go back to your regular schedule and things like that. But yeah, you're going to have to really make yourself available um, and just wait it out or get someone get one of your clients to call you or one of your friends to call you for a reading and give you a good review. And that's one of the, the best ways you can get that because it's algorithm. <clears throat> yeah. It's algorithm, right? So you're in this space, right? Where <laughs> you start feeling maybe a, even a little guilty and feeling guilty about where you're at because, I, and this is something that we talk about. This is not, this is like something that's more like talked about like in a hush, hush, hush situation, um, more, more on like private calls. This is probably not something that a lot of psychics want to admit, but it gets to a point where, psychic work, if we're working with low vibrational clients and we're not within our own most inspired and aligned niche, the one that really makes us happy and makes us feel expansive, right? Instead of like feeling like we have to hide from our business. What happens is we start hiding, don't we? We start distancing ourselves because it almost comes like, it almost becomes like a trauma in a way. Um, and you have to realize too, like once you get to a point where money and I know it's like such a privileged thing to say that money, the money doesn't matter, but the money doesn't matter. Right. Um, so it gets to a point where it doesn't matter how much money someone is willing to pay you for something. You get to a point where you're like, I just don't want to do it anymore. It doesn't feel good to my spirit. Right. And there can be a lot of guilt around that because in the beginning, this beginning journey, you're, you're like, I would do anything to just be able to work from home and using my spiritual gifts and to help people and make a decent amount of money and even make even a good amount of money. Right. And you're like, that's all I want. You know, you're begging with the universe. That's all I want. That's all I want. I just want to be able to buy my food and I just want to be able to pay my bills and, uh, you know, <laughs> afford my car note and make my rent and things like that. And then it's slowly, it starts chipping away at you. It starts chipping away at your spirit, dealing with these low vibrational questions. So when you're in this space, it's a very powerful space, but you it's one of those spaces where you feel the least powerful. It's almost kind of like a space where you start to feel powerless because you're like, okay, is this it? Is this the culmination? Is this, it? is this as good as it's going to get? And then you start to realize my spirit isn't happy here, right? And so then you start looking for your escape. And that's the strategy. That's the strategy to get the hell off the psychic hotlines and to start running your own business, right? And that's where niching really comes into play. Because the way that I kind of look at it is on, when you look at the psychic hotlines, you have to understand that those are their own individual little bubble. Um, it has its own rules. It has its own algorithm. It has its own um, reason for existing that is so beneath you as a psychic coach, as a spiritual leader, as a light leader, as I like to call people, people who are leading the light, right? Getting people out of this darkness is that it feels, it feels so scary to make that leap and in that jump. And then you try to start your own business and you realize it's a lot harder than anybody really lets onto. Client generation is such a difficult thing to get going. Um, but it's, it's one of those things where it's like a wheel, you know, at first you're, you're rolling that wheel or it's like, you're rolling that snow, um, ball of snow up the mountain. Right. And it's hard. It's difficult. It sucks. It's painful. But then you get to a certain point at the top and then it starts rolling down the hill and it starts getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So that space, that crunch space, I call it like a bottleneck space in your business, that bottleneck space in your business where you don't want to go to work anymore. You need to make money, but you're not getting clients, one-on-one -on -one clients. And there is a space. It's about 90 days. There is a space in between there where it feels like all hope is lost. Like you're never going to get a client. Like you're never going to book a package deal. You're never going to, you know, 
get people to start paying attention to your business. And that's where a lot of people give up hope and they just quit. Um, and it's sad. And I see it all the time. And there's so much mindset work that's involved with coming off the psychic hotlines because the psychic hotlines in a way it almost like brainwashes you into thinking like this is the best that you can get right and it's just simply not true there's a whole magical world out there of different ways that you can be profitable and successful in your business but it takes a full level of commitment and to understand that you can't carry these money mindset issues with you into where you want to go and to understand also that you're not going to understand everything. And that's why listening to coaches is so, so important because I've, we've been there, we've gotten through those hurdles, but the thing is a lot of people don't want to do it. Well, what is it? What do you actually have to do? Niching is absolutely the number one key thing that you want to do. And it's kind of like this on the second hotlines, you log in, uh, people come to you. It's easy. The buying motivation there, the demographic there is people who want instant gratification. They want to speak to someone right now and they're willing to pay a premium price to do it. Right. So that's the buying motivation over there. It's not helping people with their spiritual gifts. It's not helping people with their chakras. It's not helping people with their shadow work. Yes. Every once in a great while, you'll be able to have an outlier, like one of those rare unicorn clients come in for the psychic hotlines who actually do want to know that stuff. They just don't know that life coaching or they just, they don't know how to contact someone in order to make that happen in their life. So the psychic hotlines is more like a mainstream way. It's like an entry, a gateway, right? It's a gateway for both us and them to doing the work. And so you'll get to that point where you're like, I just want to show up and then I just want people to buy from me. But that's not reality with owning your own private business. It's just simply not reality. Um, so you need to have some way, some measure of message for people in order to find you. And the best way to do that is to niche. So let's talk about niching versus demographics and, and the, the, the what I call niche like inception. But it's like niching within niching within niching within niching. Okay. And when you should do that. And 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 maybe what are some good niches to kind of start with in the beginning? And then we'll talk kind of more of the journey about like getting into life coaching and life after life coaching, right? Because that's kind of where I am right now. I've just been kind of in life after life coaching, where I'm only working with like a handful of clients at a time. And most of my time is now spent doing other things like starting up other businesses and learning how to, you know, quantum am quantumly amplify my income at this point. So when you are considering what to niche in and you gonna kind of have to ask yourself one of these things. Oh, right. Yeah. Casey says that the people who don't want to take responsibility and grow, um, yeah, who don't really get what they want. So that becomes the traumatizing part. Yeah, right. And they just kind of like flail, just like a, a tantrum. A huge part of my break was because the people were just so sad to the point where I had a regular who, yeah, right? Yeah. And it's it's sadness going into those sad places every day. It takes a toll. You had a woman that was sleeping in her car, Kiana says. And yeah, sleeping in her car, but also trying to lie, but also calling psychics, right? That does not make any sense. Um, and it feels bad to to be an enabler, but also you need to make money too. So it's like, you know, Kiana says, Purple Ocean won't even really allow you to give spiritual advice. Oh, I know. I know. It, it's hard to elevate your colors. Absolutely, it is. It is. And you, you do get, um, you do really do get penalized. You do. You get penalized when it comes to trying to give people resources because the, the psychic hotline business model, and thank God I can say this now because I don't work for any of them. I'm not under contract with any of them, but the psychic hotline business model is a blessing. It's a miracle for people who need to learn how to make money at home with their psychic gifts, but it's also a curse to the people that they kind of keep brainwashed to it, right? Enable people to not use common sense when it comes to how they spend their money. And we're not talking like $5 for a tarot reading. We're talking like $5 a minute 
So if this is not a small amount of money, right? And so that's something to really think about too. Like, you know, how long in your spirit can you allow this to go on? Right. So you kind of have to ask yourself a question. You kind of, you got to be real, first of all, with who you are and where you are right now. You're someone who's like, I've got to make 5K a month. I've got to make 10K a month. And I can't just quit the psychic hotlines. And I, but I need to be able to, to move into a really profitable niche that's going to be super quick to get going to build momentum. And you're you're not in a in a spot where you can really take a hit on your income. Well, if that's the case, then here's what you really want to do: is you want to think about all of the the um, readings that you've done, say on the psychic hotlines, or readings that you've done for friends and family. Or I don't know, Etsy, if you have an Etsy store or just your Facebook business page, it doesn't matter whether you have been paid or not paid for those readings. Think back to all those readings that you have done and think back to what are the situations and what are the questions that you get that make you excited to show up for your day, right? So if you're like, man, I really love doing love and relationship coaching. I just don't like not being able to help my clients um, with their own relationships and things like that outside of a psychic fortune telling context. Well, maybe that would be a terrific niche for you to get into. So I always say love and relationships is kind of like one of the foolproof ones. Like you can't really fail if you specialize and you first launch your niche into love and relationships, um, and you could go in so many different ways from that. Like, so your niche would be love and relationships, right? And then your sub niche could be a couple different things. Your sub niche could be helping people find their soulmate or twin flame. If that's your jam, if you do like spell work or shadow work around that, like you were really good at helping people find their soulmate or twin flame. You could go that out. You could go a, um, a, another route where you are primarily helping people heal from past relationships, right? So kind of like that between space of not quite wanting to get back into relationship, but like that healing space, um, working with people who are in the midst of re reclaiming like their confidence in dating and really kind of refiguring out who they are. Um, there's also like another sub niche where you could niche into people who have lost their spouse or lost their partner. Um, so they're dealing with a breakup. They're dealing with a death. They're dealing with something where, you know, they, there has been a split in helping people cope and manage with that. Um, and there's, you know, you could go in the self care route. You could go in the self love route, um, where it's not even about relationships with external people at all, but fixing the relationship within yourself. Right. Um, even in love and relationships, that could not just be romantic, but it could also include things like your coworkers, your work, your family relationships, your relationships with your parents, your relationships with your children, right? So it's a very, you know, when you think about niching, you kind of want to pick something that you know is you're something you're good at, something that you really like to do, but something that's also going to make you a considerable amount of money, right? So other than love and relationships, that would be the first and foremost niche that I would tell you to go into if you are just trying to start up your business and get your own clients. Um, the next niche that I would tell you to get into is life purpose and psychic um, gift and mentorship, right? So psychic development, mentorship, that's, that's an area that I try to steer a lot of you in who are tired of the love and relationships. And you're like, I'm, I, I don't even want to talk about relationships for five years. Don't like, don't ask me what he thinks about you for seven years. Cause that's how long I need to recover from this. Right. So, um, life purpose, um, and within that could be a sub niche of things like developing your, um, spiritual gifts, which could include your psychic gifts. They could include your intuitive gifts. They could include your creative gifts. They could include your leadership gifts. They can include your activism gifts. You know, what makes, and it's really important for you to define your niche too. What 
goes into that niche. And that's something only you can define, right? And it's based on what you feel is important. What is important to a life purpose? Write it out. List five things that are important to someone's life purpose. And that is like, you know, the start of a coaching program with you, right? Um, so, and then you could go to, right, <laughs> right. Most love readings can be avoided with just good communication between the two people, the two or more pe persons, right? Absolutely. Um, and so, you know, teaching people how to communicate and set boundaries and communicate their boundaries. I mean, we know a lot of people need that as well. But yeah, I was the second niche I would say to go into is, is, um, life purpose. And within that things like, uh, career things within like, um, furthering your career development, um, increasing your creativity, awakening your psychic gifts. And that could even lead to you becoming a business coach down the line where you teach people how, once they've awakened their psychic gifts, how they can start not only just making money with it, but like actually helping other people. And so maybe, you know, your niche is to become a psychic development mentor where you set up your own psychic development academy, right? If people just dated people who actually liked them, the majority of people <laughs> with tarot readers would be out of business, right? Uh, yeah, it's interesting, but there's definitely like a, there's like a subsect of people that just they date and it all goes back to the deservingness thing you know like these wounds these generational uh wounds that we have these um familiar ancestral wounds that we have that we learn you know through things like abandonment or you know trying to pick people that that continually play out these these theatrical loops of of, of undeservingness within our lives like always picking the one guy that's not going to ever commit, but you see it as a challenge and you're like, what's wrong with me? You know, um, it's a whole thing. It is a whole thing. And we could talk a long time about that. <laughs> but uh, I mean, at the, uh, at the core of it, it's all about deservingness. It's just, where do you want to apply that to? You know, what, what's the life area that you really want to apply that to? And you're like, and if you're sitting there like, um, I don't really feel like I know any life area that I really want to work within or, anything like that. Well then, okay. So what's the life area that you excel in? What's something that you excel in? Well, if you're really gifted and, and having a, um, an amazing relationship, well, maybe love and relationships is something you know, that you can work with it because that's something where you have a positive personal life experience within. Um, let's say that you are, um, a, a very strong clairvoyant. Okay. Well, maybe your niche is to help other psychics learn how to become a really strong clairvoyant, right? And so maybe uh, it, your niche is not anything even to really to do with like being psychic so much as just being um, a holistic practitioner. I mean, a lot of you came to psychic work really from a background of like herbalism or Ayurveda or, you know, um, TCM, tra traditional Chinese medicine or yoga. Um, a lot of you came into psychic work because you couldn't figure out how to make that niche work. And so you got into this parallel niche of psychic work where it, it, you can expand within that. So you could be a niche could be, um, you know, helping people with their ch chakras, chakras. It could be helping people with yoga, but it, to what extent? Right. And so I think we all kind of understand what niching is now. Before we move on to demographics, does anybody have any questions? about niching, about what it means to niche. Does every does everybody kind of understand what niching is now? You guys have a really good idea of what it is. Yeah, you did. Richard came from holistic nutrition and naturopathic medicine. And that's what I originally came in. I originally came into this with a background in, in cosmetology school and about and um, specializing in aesthetics. And I wanted to do Reiki um, Reiki facials and, and massage therapy. And that's kind of where I started out. Um, and then I realized that's not quite what I want to do. So some of you will come into this knowing, okay, I want to do something that helps people. I want to do something that helps people in a holistic and natural way, but I'm not exactly sure how I really want to do that. And then we you know, you kind of fall into the rabbit hole, the vortex of psychic work. And you're like, oh, wait, hold on a minute. You know, maybe this isn't exactly what I want to do. And that's okay too. 
um, you're going to you're going to go through niches and you're going to first of all, you have to understand that niching is also your journey of understanding who you are. It's also a journey of um, understanding what you value, right? What is important to you? You're going to go through niches like yeah, on track. It's like you're an onion. <laughs> you're, you know, peeling off layers and layers and layers of things like societal expectations, what your ideals are about what you think is involved in the niche that you want to get into. So something kind of like that might be um, you get into one niche, right? And you're like, actually, even though I'm really good at this, this is something that happens a lot in private calls. They'll say, clients will tell me, even though I'm really good at this niche, I don't like it. I might be making a lot of money with it. I might be really good at it, but it's not what makes my soul sing. It's not what makes me feel like I have done a good job today, right? And so there's a lot of guilt around shifting and starting a niche and then being like, ugh, maybe this isn't what I wanted to do. And like, there's a lot of guilt around abandoning a niche that you may have started, right? Never give up a niche because it's not bringing in clients. That can be fixed. That's fixable. That's building a funnel. That's building lead generation content. That's being able to capture leads. And that's then from there being able to communicate and, um, you know, empathize with your client, build trust through the audience, right? So never give up a niche just simply because you don't think it's making you money. That's not true. You can make money doing literally anything. We've talked about that before. You can literally make money doing anything these days. Um, too many ideas, hard to narrow it down. That's another thing too. Like you're like, a lot of people feel like if I niche, then I'm, then I'm not allowed to do all of these other things that I want to do. And so a lot of people have trouble placing themselves within a temporary box. Like, I don't want to, I don't want you to ever place yourself in a box, but I need you all to really understand that the more jack of all trades you are, the less you're speaking to anybody and the less important things you're saying. Nobody's going to take notice of that message because it applies to everybody. So when you're when you're thinking about niching, it's not necessarily that, oh, I'm going to be in this niche and this is all I can ever do. And this is what the world expects from me from now on. That's not necessarily true. You are a multidimensional being. You're multi-passionate. You have multiple potentials. And you, as you learn to run successful business, once you get that client attraction thing down, which is really like everybody's big hurdle, but once you get through that hurdle, you're like, oh, that's really like no big deal, <laughs> right? Like getting clients, no big deal. It's about really the hard part is attracting the, the right clients, the clients you really, really want to work with what I call soulmate clients. Yeah, nervous to pin yourself down. You're thinking about offering a Conjure 101 class. And yeah, so that's, these are really good ideas. And so, um, you know, the riches, the riches are in the niches, niches, the riches are, the riches are in the niches really hit home for me. Right. And so you kind of have to think about a niche, not as saying like necessarily no, to everything else that you want to do, you have plenty of time to do everything and all the things. But in order to create a, a, a vortex of attraction, of magnetism, where people actually start paying attention to what you're saying, you have to be very mindful with who you're talking about. And so what it really just means is, is that, you know what, I'm going to shelf everything else for just right now still work on your bullet points, still work on outlining your programs, still work on content ideas that you want to create at some time, at some point. It's not necessarily that you're, you're cutting off that creative force within yourself and, and, you know, kind of punishing yourself that you're not allowed to do that anymore. It just means that, Hey, I'm going to take some time to focus on this right now, because once I build, once you have a niche and once you have an audience, then switching niches is really easy. Um, but being able to build up your first initial audience, that's, you can't do anything unless you do that. Um, you can't do anything unless you build up your initial tribe of people that really see you for who you are, right? Um, and then there's so much guilt around that. And so personally, me, 
I try to stick within a niche for about two to three years. Um, and I try to stick within it, within it that long because I know uh, as a business coach, as a mentor, it's going to take you that long to build a level of financial freedom with that. And what do you do within those two to three years? Well, you book out your one-on-one, you start moving into um, like package deals where you start doing like six sessions at a time, getting more of like the multi-thousand dollar transactions. So you you move out of that whole like, okay, I got to fill up my daily appointments. And then you start looking at, okay, how do I zoom out from there? And then how, once the daily appointments are going well, and you don't have to work too, too hard at client generation, then you can start playing around with other things like setting up, um, doing workshops or doing live events, starting to focus not just on a one-on-one, but starting to focus more on doing like passive income like or semi-passive income. So, you know, from moving from one-on-ones and then moving from one-on-ones to package deals and then moving to life group programs, right? Where your where your earning potential exponentially increases and your workload goes down, where you can have you can run a program that you have 20 people in, they're all paying five hundred dollars to be there, you know. It's a six week program, something like that, you know, learning how to package your time differently. But you need that initial audience to do it because without that initial audience, you just you don't have anything to work with. Right. Um, So then from there, um, what's after life group programs? Well, then that becomes like selling those as passive income, um, moving on to doing things like telesummits, even hosting your own telesummits, doing your own live group events. Um, even moving into doing retreats, um, local meetups and stuff like that. So there is so much within two or three years of niching that you can do and accomplish within a niche. So when I tell you to stick within a niche for two years, two or three years, that's everything that you should be doing. That's what I teach in Luxurious Lightworker program. So that is the, the program that takes you through the six phases of business. Okay. What do I do once I'm done with one-on-ones? Where where can I go from here? Okay, now um, packages. Okay, from there, where can I go from there? Group programs, where can I go from there? Starting um, uh, an online academy or starting um, a membership site where you can have a thousand people all paying $10 a month to belong to your membership site, right? So you kind of have to think long-term. You can't give up within just a few months of trying to niche. Really, if you're not moving through the system, the the phases at that kind of level between two and three years, it means you haven't exhausted a niche. Um, And there's a lot more ways that you can still capitalize on a niche even and do different things, even though you don't wanna do say one-on-one anymore. That's kind of like where I'm at. Like I take a handful of one-on-one people, but my true passion right now is doing YouTube content, doing the podcast, setting up my other businesses, you know, things where I can kind of step away from the computer where I don't have to be in this room all day, every day, right? Now, moving on from there, right? How do you shift? How do you shift from one niche to another niche? Okay. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of mindset that goes into this, right? So let's just say, Either you're at a point where you've spent a year in a niche and you're like, you know what, this niche really isn't making me happy. And that's okay. You know, and not, and I think a lot of people are scared to spend time doing something that they think can't carry them through the future. And this is something I always tell people is that no matter what you're doing, no matter what actions you're taking, it doesn't matter what niche that you're posting about as long as you are building up an audience, as long as you are building up authenticity and trust within your brand, those, some people are going to follow you. Will everybody follow you? No. Um, And then, you know, the other part of that is where you have, you felt like you've exhausted everything that you have to say and teach about a niche. And you're like, you know what, I think it's time for me to move on to the next thing. And so there's that point where, you know, you're slowly leaving one niche and kind of building into another niche, which is something I'm personally doing right now. So right now um, I am setting up my, my next launch is going to be a coven, an online membership coven. 
And that's going to be something that is completely different like than what I'm doing now. But considering the fact I have, you know, almost 10,000 people in my audience, I could probably bank on at least 20 to 30, maybe upwards of 50% on, of those people following me to this next, you know, version of this next version of myself, of who I'm going to be, who I'm going to show up as online. And the reason why I'm able to do that, the reason why I have the privilege of doing that is because I have continually shown up and delivered and become, you know, I've been available. I've been reliable in other niches. I've already built that up. I've also been living and and marketing myself authentic, authentically, authentically. Um, and so, you know, I, I, I'm not only a psychic, but I also identify as a witch. So I talk about witchy stuff all the time. And even though witchy people are not necessarily my psychic business demographic, when I market myself as a witch and I talk about wishy things, I am building that connection with people who are psychic and witches, right? And so now what I've done at this point is I can count on probably at least 20% of people following me to this next business. And that 20% is everything because that those are people who are going to become your founders. And what I've noticed over the years is that people want to grow with you and they love to grow with you. I always felt so scared whenever I even thought about not releasing any type of content that like wasn't business coaching related because, you know, you're like, that's what everybody knows me as. Right. And you kind of you're like, oh, I don't know how people are going to respond to this. I don't know if people um, uh, are going to be repelled by the fact that I'm talking about things that are witchy and not just psychic business, you know, things like that. But the reality is, is we make these we make these relationships over time with people. Um, there's been so many people that I've met that have come into my business just online and we've met in real life. We've gone to retreats and things like that. So I want you to not just see your online business as a means to make money in the world. It is, but it's also a means to find your people and your people are going to follow you as you evolve. But you have to establish a track record of dependability, a track record of reliability, and you have to put out content that is going to get people interested in what you have to say, right? Oh my gosh, thank you so much. That is such a such a sweet thing. Svetlana says, I've gotten some witchy tips from you that helps with my psychic work. And that's just, you know, it's a good example. And thank you for saying that. It really means a lot to me because... I think that so often, and so we're closing in with about 15 minutes to go on this live stream. So I really want you guys to get your, your questions in. Um, and if you have any questions about like what you should niche in, or if you want some psychic insight and like, tell me like who you want to work with and stuff like that. Right. So I really want to talk about demographics really quickly. Um, and then we'll go to questions. So demographics, niching versus demographics, that's that's something that's really important to understand. So um, niching is, okay, what do I want to coach about, right? Your demographic is, who do I want to coach? So, and what, what specific results are they looking for? What specific manifestation are they looking for in their life? And what kind of space are they in in their lives? So when we think demographics, something that comes to mind is probably age, right? So age is a really big um, demographic in which there's certain life events and certain rites of passage within levels of age and experience that your demographic may not be 20-year-old girls anymore like it was that are just trying to find their voice and try to find their vision, you know, things like that it might not be 20 year olds anymore. It might be 30 year olds who are looking to, you know, further their career, or it might be 30 year olds who are dealing with their first divorce and wanting to get back into finding their soulmate or twin flame. Um, it might be 40 year olds who are quitting their corporate jobs and wanting to start businesses working from home. It might be 50 and 60 year olds who are just now experiencing empty nesting. Their kids are, gr their kids are grown. Um, they might even be going through a divorce or they might be going through a separation or they might be trying to redefine their relationship outside of being mom or parent. 
Um, you know, there's also demographics of people in their 60s and 70s who their parents are passing away now, and they're trying to figure out what to do now with with all of their free time. And so age and understanding the specific rites of passage and what's important to people in certain decades, that's important to finding your specific demographic. Um, so when I was in my 20s and 30s, I, I felt like, you know, primarily 20 year olds and early 30 year olds were my were my main demographic. But now that I'm, you know, going towards my 40s, I find that my demographic is really like 40, 50, 60 year old women. Um, some people still in their 30s. Yes. But really, like my demographic is really people 40 on up. That's the ones I, I tend to just vibe with the most. You know, we're in a similar space in life. And so when you are in a similar space in life, like you kind of understand things that you might not understand in your 20s, right? Your view, your perspective of the world evolves and that's, it's very valuable. Um, so even when people tell me that they're six years old and they, you know, 65 and they're retiring and they want to start their own business now. And their main question is, is it too late? Hell no, it's not too late because there's so much wisdom. Like, I'm like, you're you're so wise. Like, how could it be too late? You know, like you have so much wisdom. How could you think that your time and your information is, is worthless? Like I just, you know, so it's that mindset thing. And then going into like certain other demographics, like, do you want to work with women? Do you want to work with men? Do you want to work with everybody? Do you want to work with, um, LGBT, right? Is your primary de demographic people of color or disabled people or people who identify as spoonies like I do, you know, people who deal with chronic illness on a, on a daily basis. So your niche is what life area that you kind of want to focus on and then what kind of result do you want to get for them? And then your demographic is the qualities that make up a person that make them the right fit for who you are and where they are. So when you guys come together, that magic can truly, truly happen. Yeah, I so much I agree with what you guys are saying. So I just want to kind of let you guys know, I don't see any questions coming in. I'm going to check on my phone just to make sure that I haven't missed anything. But I think I've gotten um, everybody's comments. You can probably build build your audience, Kiana says, by making a YouTube channel and giving away free content. And And yeah, that's YouTube has been um, integral and irreplaceable in me building up my audience. I would say like 70% of you guys come from YouTube. Um, and then, you know, your social media channels that you put a lot of time and energy into, that is also could be considered a demographic. So each, um, you know, individual social media channel has its own demographic of people. So Instagram, for example, is like people who really are visually you know, uh, motivated who really like short micro form content, reels, stuff like that, more of like an entertainment vibe. Um, YouTube is, is great for people who want to do more of like a teaching vibe where they want to like do more of a long form content and, and things like that. So it really does matter, um, what social media that you put your time and energy into. And you kind of have to think like, what kind of people, what are the demographics of people that are participating in this social media and uh, this channel that I'm putting a lot of time and energy into. And I think a lot of people also struggle with the fact that, oh my gosh, I have to post on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube and all the places and do the TikToks. And it's just not true. You can literally just focus on one um, social media and put all your energy into that one social media and that would be fine. The only thing that I would say is make sure that you have some kind of opt-in where you are getting people into your email list or something like that. And that can be as simple as just having like a free gift. And so that way, God forbid that like, you know, your um, social media gets hacked or you get, you find yourself like kicked off the social media or something like that, that you have a backup. So that's, that would be my only caveat to that is that sure, you can spend your time focusing on just one area, one social media, you know, and, and working with the demographics of that just as so long as you have some kind of backup, some backup way for people to find you. Right. Okay. So today we talked all about niching. Let me pull up um, what is going to be next week's 
um, next week's episode. And then I kind of want to just talk briefly about what's coming up with um, the online coven. So the online coven is going to be on Patreon. I know a lot of you guys are excited about that because you guys, literally, you guys have been asking me to get on to Patreon for like years now. So yes, we're going on Patreon. We're very excited about that. Um, it's going to be, we're going to do like a couple different tiers. Um, and primarily the coven is going to be based on people who want to step into their dark feminine power. So it's for men, women, everybody, it's for everybody, but the primary vibe of it is going to be dark feminine where we're going to be focusing on working with the dark goddesses. We're going to be focusing on working with more of the, the shadow work, the, the, um, the, the doing shadow work around learning how to do gray magic and even dark magic. And we're going to talk about hexing and cursing and lifting those hexes, lifting those curses. We're going to be doing um, eight different uh, Sabbaths and Esbat rituals. And we're going to do like things like coven crafts where we'll get together and do crafts together on Zoom. So it's going to be more of like a, a social kind of like hangout, but also being able to like communicate with other people who want to be more fierce in their witchiness and who want to get out of the love and light kind of bubble who are ready to go kind of beyond that. Because truthfully with the recent real election results and things like that, like I am so ready to enter my villain era. Like I'm going into my forties. I'm ready to just step out of the love and light bubble and get more into my fierce and feral feminine. Because at this point, like, I feel like I'm ready. I'm ready to take that stand and I'm ready to support other people who want to do that and want to explore that and to find out just how powerful they actually are. Ooh, good question. So will you ever do coaching about starting tarot channels or something social related? I have all of that stuff. I have all of those trainings. So if you go to um, www.theprofitablepsychic.com, I want you to just look over the trainings. And then what I want you to do is I want you to message me, whether you can message me here on my business page or leave a comment or whatever. But I want you to tell me about who you are in your business. And I want you to tell me like why you want to start a tarot channel. I want you to tell me like why you think this is going to be the thing that like moves the dial for you. And then I can tell you which training that you should probably get. So I, I have a lot of trainings. I just need to know a little bit about you and like where you're at. And then I can definitely, you know, help you with that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> In the context of booking one-on-ones for your signature offer. Yes. In addition to fishing in groups similar to your niche and opting through your funnel sequences, do you have any tips? Yeah, events. So doing events, like doing um, challenges, doing um, uh, free workshops, doing free live streams like what I'm doing right now. Um, let's see, going on and being on other people's telesummits, doing um, guest appearances on really popular um, podcasts and things like that. So really it's more of like a mingling thing. It's really more about how can you bring the community together? So doing some, doing events like that, getting more involved in the communal aspect of events, that's what's going to push you further. Other than that, ads, sending, um, you know, just setting up an ad for your opt-in or setting up an ad for your signature offer and just running ads to it. Because at that point, it's a numbers game, right? So you might spend $25 on ads, but if it gets you two to $300 in a sale for doing that, then, you know, it's worth it. So don't be, don't be scared of putting money into ads. You definitely want to join the coven. Well, I would be so happy to have you join that coven. It would be really amazing. And it's going to be for everybody, everybody. Okay. Well, I thank you all for joining me. Um, oh, when is launch? So we're trying really hard to launch for Yule. Well, we might do a soft launch for Yule. But as with everything, everything always is like, oh, yeah, let's set that up. And then it's like, oh, well, we got to go through the things. Because here's the, here's the thing is like we really want to make sure that when you come into it, you have things to do. So right now um, we are starting. We're literally me and Susie Zern, Madam Z. Um, she's going to be my co-host for this. She's going to be my co-lead, my co-high priestess for the coven. Um, she's going to be helping us. And she really 
her her specialty is like dark magic, um, paranormal investigation, mediumship, high end magic, ceremonial magic, um, leadership training, and things like that. Like learning how to participate and actually run the circles and stuff like that. That's like her air, her zone of genius. My zone of genius is more like green witchcraft, plant medicines, growing your own plant medicines, um, mindset work around wealth uh, um, and money and, and so many other, and doing like the bus business trainings and things like that, right? So it's going to be a conglomeration. Will there be advanced elemental magic? So what we're going to do actually is um, we're, we're creating our own tradition. We're going to be creating our own tradition. So it's not going to be based on anything else you've ever learned. Um, it's going to be a conglomeration of all of the things that we have learned over the years that that work really easily and really powerfully, right? So um, there's going to be basics involved, but it's going to be on a 13 month calendar where um, every month you'll get a new, you know, you know, get, you'll get a new lesson. There's going to be core um, studies. There's going to be core studies like divination. There's going to be core studies like uh, herbalism, plant magic, uh, some other things like. Yeah, yeah, chaos magic. Um, and really, it's going to be dark goddess focused. So it's going to be primarily focused on what is the archetype of the dark goddess that we're talking about at the time? What do they have to teach us? And what what is some spell work that we can do that aligns also with the wheel of the year? So it's going to be primarily dark goddess based. It's going to be primarily wheel of the year based. And we're also going to have a space for talking about more taboo things like hexing, cursing blood magic, death magic, sex magic, all kinds of different types of magic that don't necessarily belong in the love and light bubble, right? If you, so if you want to liberate yourself from the love and light bubble and figure out how powerful you really are, I invite you to be sure to follow my business page. We will have a wait list ASAP. If we don't get um, launched by Yule, um, then we'll definitely be launched by Impulse. But we're going to try to get launched by Yule because Susie really wants to do a, a, a Yule gift exchange. And so we, we're, we're trying. We're trying. You're, you're flipping your table in excitement. That is so funny. <laughs> um, thank you for being excited. Thank you for being excited for me. And thank you for being excited about that new direction because this is something that I've been kind of sleeping on, slumbering on, and just kind of distilling and boiling in my cauldron for probably two years now. Um, I'm also going to be talking about serpent magic and, um, you know, working with serpents and you guys are going to see the snakes more. You're going to see uh, Mojo. You're going to see Jinx. We'll talk, we'll have those guys out and it's just going to be more of like a chill vibe, like social, just relax, hang out, talk about magic stuff and have a good time. So I'm hoping that you guys will follow us in there and come hang out with us in there. Um, I'm, we're going to be there like on a weekly basis. So it's going to be really high touch, really, really, really high touch, meaning you're going to have access to me and Susie a lot, a lot, a lot. And I know a lot of you really need that right now, especially with how everything has happened over the last week and how we're all kind of feeling and how the overall vibe is feeling, and especially in the United States, which kind of sets the tone for the rest of the world, for better or for worse. And um, it's going to be very, very, very social justice oriented as well. So I know that makes a lot of you happy because that makes me happy. <laughs> That's a really big part of who I am and why I do what I do. So I love you all. Thank you so much. I will see you guys next week. Oh, yeah. I wanted to tell you guys what we're going to um, be talking about next week before I let you go. Just give me one second and then you guys can go back to your amazing day that I'm sure you have lots of clients and money to be making, right? Okay, so next next week we're next Monday we're going to be talking about how to become irreplaceable in your niche. All right? So we're going to continue on the discussion of niching and we're going to talk about how to become super irreplaceable, how to become unforgettable, how to become the number one person that people think of when they think of your niche. I'll see you next week.